there everyone and I thank you guys so much for tuning in to yet another episode of My Orchid Adventures in which today we are going to focus on this catacetum right here. This is the catacetum that we did a propagation on and it was a successful propagation. So in this video we're going to talk about what actually transpired, also some of the things to expect after a successful propagation and also some probabilities of what can happen next. So let's go ahead and talk about exactly what has already transpired. Now, although we are talking about this catacetum propagation in specific, know that the general rule of thumb also applies to other orchids that are being propagated as well. So with this catacetum right here, we did the most easiest, most basic catacetum propagation where we actually took each and every individual pseudobulb and we separated them out. So indeed, we divided each pseudobulb. Now afterwards, we went ahead and cleaned them up, cut off all the dead roots, and then we went ahead and placed them back into the same pot. And we were very fortunate that each and every one of these pseudobulbs were strong enough to create new growths. So each one of the five pseudobulbs created five growths. And if you guys have not seen that video in which I did do this propagation, go ahead and click on the link right here. You'll be able to see the step-by-step -step process of exactly what was done to get us to this point. Now, even though we did do the propagation where we divided out each individual pseudobulb and we also planted them back in at the very same time, note that you may still get a variation in growth just depending on how strong the pseudobulb is that is growing that new growth and also how much energy it has. So you may have different sizes in growth. And with that in mind, also note that there may be some pseudobulbs that actually do not have enough strength to create a growth. So you might actually find that some bulbs may end up being duds. And in this particular catacetum right here, we had three initial bulbs that were at a very good size. So therefore, it had enough energy to also grow these new growths at a very good size as well. And if we take a closer look at this actual growth, you will see that it is coming into maturity as you are seeing the actual bulb beginning to grow. And here you can find it within the inner casing of these outer leaves right here. You can see that bulb beginning to emerge. But if we take a look-see right into the pot, you will actually see two smaller bulbs right there. And they are actually the oldest the smallest and the most shriveled up bulbs in the entire bunch. And to be honest with you, I was so shocked to even see that they had enough energy to grow these new growths. You can actually see the difference in their growth size to the other ones that are maturing and beginning to create their bulbs. These little guys right here look like they are so far off from even thinking about growing any bulbs. And I will show you a top view of the other ones that are maturing and are of good size. And then again, taking a look at the tiny little guys right there. Definitely a considerable size difference. So that does pose as an issue and also a concern for us. And the reason why we are a little bit worried here is for the fact that we are into our autumn season. And during the autumn season, you guys know that some of our orchids, such as these catacetums, are known for going into their dormancy period, which means they will begin to lose all of their leaves. And what will be left are these leafless bulbs. That's right. So my major concern here, folks, is for these two little itty bitty guys right here. Because they are so far off from creating their very own bulbs, what will happen when all of their tiny little leaves fall off? Because they don't have a bulb of their own and they don't have a good energy source either because their original bulbs are so shriveled and so small. So will they have enough energy to survive the winter? That is the question. Now, I'm not overly concerned about their bigger siblings because again, they do have their bulbs coming and also they have good initial bulbs as well to sustain them. So I do believe they have enough strength to carry them through. Now, of course, we did this propagation in the beginning of this year. So it took all of this time for them to grow and to mature 
to the point where they do have pseudobulbs coming. Now, of course, they didn't have enough strength to go ahead and create their blossoms, but that's average and that's normal and that's expected because, again, we just propagated them this year and their whole primary concern or their whole goal is to sustain and to survive. So they just want to grow as much as they can, focus enough energy on their growth and not their blooms, so again, they can survive the winter process. So I believe the three bigger guys, they're gonna be okay. It's just the smaller ones that we're gonna have to keep our fingers crossed on and we can't get so attached to them because they just may not be strong enough to survive. So the bottom line here, folks, is the fact that it is so important for you to know exactly what you're getting into before doing your propagation because that is going to determine exactly if it's well worth it for you. You definitely want to know exactly what it's all about, the risk and the effort that you're going to have to take and make to do the propagation and have it be successful, and then you're going to have to determine is it worth it for you. And a very important thing to note, when you are propagating a catacetum, do not expect any blooms from your catacetum within the first year, perhaps not even the second year or the third year. It just depends on how strong your orchid is, how fast it will grow, and how quickly it can get enough energy to where it's at a point where it can even bloom. Now, if you are interested in your catacetum orchid doubling up in size, doubling up in the amount of new growths, and doubling up in the possible potential of having many spikes, then indeed, this could be a great option for you, of course, if you don't mind the weight. Because with each individual bulb that has successfully grown a new growth has become its own individual plant. So for the years to come, they have the potential of continuing to create new growths. And with that in mind, they also have the potential of continuing to create spikes. So you can imagine what size catacetum you can end up with. A humonga dunga wonga catacetum display with so many spikes. So that is a possible potential of this propagation as well. And for me, that is exactly what I wanted. And if you don't mind waiting for those spikes, then indeed, it may be well worth it for you. And although we are talking about the catacetum propagation in specific, know that within any type of propagation that you are doing, you are going to need to commit the time and the energy and also the effort in having a successful propagation. So I definitely would not suggest to propagate if you cannot commit to it. And there you have it, folks. That is a complete catacetum propagation wrap. Now, you guys have got to let me know exactly what did you think about this propagation propagation that I did with this catacetum. Also, let me know, do you think it's going to survive the winter, especially with the two teeny weeny guys that I showed you? Do you think they're also going to survive? I would also like to know, what do you guys think about propagating orchids? Let me know your thoughts and post those comments below. And folks, I do want to apologize if you did notice that my voice is a little bit scratchy. I am under the weather, but I definitely wanted to put out a video just for you guys. So indeed, I persevered. I do hope you guys learned something new from this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please be sure to like, share, and also subscribe. Also join me on Facebook as well. And as you guys already know, I do truly love and appreciate you guys all. I will see you guys later, and I'll also grow with you guys later as well. Bye-bye for now. Mwah.